Hey guys, Bobby is here with the Heritage Pride Homestead out in the greenhouse and back to bring you another aquaponics update video or aquaponics build video. Um, so in the uh, last two videos, the first video, hopefully you can hear me because the, it's raining pretty hard right now obviously. So uh, anyway, in the first video, I uh, showed you guys the, uh, the bench for the um, uh, for the grow beds, how the, the bench was for the grow beds. In the second video, we talked about the aquaculture system. In this video, I'm going to show you the grow beds installed. Um, and I'm also going to show you how I did my plumbing uh, for the drain um, and the water supply as well. Then in the next video, I'll show you how to set up one of the grow beds with the auto siphon and the grow media and all that good stuff. So anyway, let me grab the camera and I'll go ahead and show you guys the, uh, the grow beds. All right, so here are the grow beds installed into the bench system. And uh, I showed you in the, uh, in the bench video um, how the grow beds would slide in there, but here's how they're actually attached. And I'm just using a uh, stainless steel wood screw with a stainless steel flange. And then I place those all the way around it. And uh, that's just to uh, hold it securely in there so that the bed doesn't twist or, or anything like that. It holds it nice and tight. Um, then, of course, you've got the two rails in the center. You can kind of see them there, the supports. And then we have a bulkhead uh, in the front here, and that is for the, um, it's a three quarter inch threaded bulkhead, and that's where the auto siphon will actually siphon out of. Uh, now you could use a uni seal if you wanted to, but I chose to use a bulkhead because it, to me, it seems a little bit more, um, I guess, sturdy and or um, project you know uh, it works for this application um, this application I think a bulkhead is more fitting than a uni seal um, but anyway so that's that now uh, let me take you underneath and I'll show you the drain all right so underneath here there's our bulkhead right there it comes down uh, just just a hair. I mean, it's just a nipple basically uh, to connect the uh, bulkhead to the drain to this 90 here. So there's a three quarter inch 90, and then that shoots back and then hits another three quarter inch 90. And then because this one is the last one on the run, it drops into a two inch 90 degree sweep here. Uh, and then our main drain is a two inch drain, and where each of the uh, auto siphon drains are there's a T, two inch T um, and it just you know goes all the way down through there all the way to the end and each grow bed has a T for the drain to drain into and then at the end down there it not I had to notch out a little bit of the uh, sump tank and then the pipe just lays on the top of the sump tank and drains back in One thing I want to point out while I'm down here, during my research on auto siphons and watching videos of other people that made their uh, systems or built their systems, um, you know, it seems like everybody's got a better design for the auto siphon. Like, there's a million different designs out there. And we'll talk about the auto siphons in the next video, but in this video, I just wanted to point out um, one thing that I I would I would say just for physics to work properly um, I would say you you need some form of 90 here because if you have a straight if you just let's say your uh, your drain over here this this big drain this T was right here underneath this um, to drain straight down I would think that um, as far as physics are concerned uh, it would it would inter interrupt or uh, mess up the way the auto siphon works, um, and so in everything that I read, 
uh, and everything that I researched, they had at least 190 in it. So 190 degree bend somewhere in it. Now you could go a 90 and then a straight pipe and then drop into your uh, sump tank if you wanted to, if you wanted to drain each individual one. But I've seen people say, oh, just use 190, uh, you need to use 390s, you need to use all this other stuff. I'm using 290s, I have no drop really uh, from the bottom of the bulkhead to here. I mean, it's an inch and a half maybe drop. I'm 90 in there, going straight back and then 90 and down again. And so far in the one grow bed that I've had running now for a few days, um, there was no issues so far. The auto siphon is working perfectly. And so, uh, just an FYI, uh, I don't think it's necessarily that important to follow uh, the instructions um, on, you know, people's idea of what they think needs to happen in order for an auto siphon to work properly. Um, but I would recommend at least one 90 degree turn, one 90 degree bend. And I've seen people use them with not one 90 degree bend and it works. And I've seen them use 45s and 90s and three of them and all this other stuff. And those work too. So maybe it's not that important. But I think for physics, as far as physics are concerned, you need at least one 90 in there. And that kind of, I, I would say it kind of keeps from breaking the seal um, of the siphon once it's running. Uh, keeping that 90 in there puts a little bit of back pressure on the drain um, to uh, slow down the siphon enough that it doesn't uh, create an air bubble um, and stop the siphon. Alright, so down on this end, back at the sump tank, this is where our two inch uh, main drain comes out for the uh, drains for the grow beds. Um, right here, you said just kick it out right into the sump tank, and uh, it does. It's done fine, just like that. No issues at all. Um, and it's so far, it's handled um, the rate of both the one grow bed and the duckweed bed going non-stop, no problems. So I'm hoping that the two inches is enough for the rest of the beds, uh, but I think it will be. So now we'll talk about the supply of water to the uh, to the system itself so in uh, in the last video I showed you guys this manifold that I built um, to supply the water to everything so basically um, nothing's really changed on that it's still a one inch manifold the only thing that happened was I had the Jabeo uh, 9,000 liter an hour jobby in here um, magnetic drive pump. Anyway, the pump went out on me. Uh, the company that I bought it from on eBay actually replaced the pump, no questions asked. But I was afraid that it was going to take a while. I was afraid I was going to have to send the old pump back before they sent me a new one, blah, 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 all this other stuff. So I jumped online and I ordered another one. This one is actually a 15,000 liter an hour pump. So this pump you can see the little pump controller here. I've got it on uh, number two. <laughs> and right now I'm running two Venturis and one of the grow beds. Um, and it's it, it's not even phasing it. So, um, so far it's doing good. And I can turn that pump way up. That pump will be more than enough. Um, but my kind of theory behind it is you're not only looking at liters per hour, you're also looking at lift. This one's got like five meters of lift. It's ridiculous. But um, it's also not taxed out right now. So it's, you know, I could run this, I can run my entire system full wide open, you know, all, everything that I've got and still probably never, you know, max the, the amount of what that pump is capable of. But in return, that keeps that pump from wearing out. And so that's uh, that's the reason for having such a big pump. Um, and those pumps, if you're curious, I've got them on the Heritage Pride Marketplace. Um, you can go on there and check those out. It'll be under the hydroponics and the aquaponics um, uh, menu lists or whatever, uh, subcategories. So you can, you can check those out on there. 
So the, the water's pumping the water up into the manifold. I've got one line here that runs over to the Venturi on the um, on the Biomedia filter, the moving bed filter. It just runs out and over to that. The other one here, um, right now, it's not glued in. It's just temporarily placed in there. This water hose here is my, because I'm running the cycle, the water needs to be warmer. Like you want your water in about the 90 degree um, range, uh, high 80s, low 90s. Um, and that allows that bacteria to start to brew basically. And so this is my attempt at a solar water heater. I've got a black rubber hose and I've got it stretched out in the sun. And then I'm just feeding water from the sump tank through the hose really slow and getting warm water back uh, through the hose. Um, it does work. There's definitely warm water coming out of it, warmer than what's going into it. Problem is, is that that amount of water is so minimal compared to the 200 plus gallons of water that's in the system right now. And so it really doesn't uh, put a dent in it, honestly. So I'll probably actually unhook that later today. But it was an attempt at a cheap way to run a little solar heater. Might work, um, you know, in other applications, but uh, it's just not enough for this system right now in this application. So that's what that one's for. Um, so that's also running on that pump right now. Um, then on this next one here is running our Venturi for the uh, duckweed bed. Uh, we're just blowing some oxygen and cycling water into the duckweed bed. Doesn't take much um, to do that. And then this one here, this next one right here, is running the supply manifold for the grow beds. So all I did was I, I just reduced it down to three quarters of an inch right out of the out of the manifold there. And then I'm running three quarter inch 90 to a shutoff, 90 to a shutoff, so on and so forth. So each grow bed has its own uh, controller to control the amount of flow. And then I went ahead and put one on this one. Um, I didn't know, you know, it's always an experiment to see how this kind of stuff will work so I didn't know about the duckweed you know we don't know in the future what that'll consist of so I went ahead and put one there so if I wanted to I could take this duckweed out of here and convert it over to a actual grow bed so anyway I went ahead and put one there so that's the water supply and then of course we've got the one that runs back over to the Venturi on the fish tank so anyway that's the supply system. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. I'm trying to keep the videos a little bit shorter uh, just to keep the you know audience retention there or whatever I guess. Uh, but anyway, uh, so you don't have to take in so much information at one time if you're trying to follow along with this series. I'm going to try to make the videos a little bit shorter and more uh, directive toward uh, what we're working on. So instead of just calling them vlogs or whatever, I'm actually going to title the videos um, so that you know you can kind of see uh, which video is which. So for this video, it'll be uh, the plumbing and drain system or grow bed, uh, water supply and drain, you know, something. Um, anyway, so that's that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, the grow beds went in really easy once I, you know, got the screws and everything just plumbed everything together it's just simple PVC construction there's nothing fancy about it um, and so far everything is not leaking everything's draining properly so I would say so far we're a success um, so anyway that's pretty much it uh, as far as that's concerned in the next video we'll go ahead and go over the uh, auto siphon and how that works and the components that I'm using for that it's a real simple design um, I'm not following the guidance of any of these, uh, the best uh, auto siphon, better auto siphon, all this other stuff. I'm using just a simple plain Jane auto siphon and it works. And so if you're looking for simple, that's the video to watch. So that's going to be the next video in the series. We're going we're gonna to do the auto siphons. Um, so anyway, if you haven't seen the other videos and you want to follow along with this series on uh, backyard aquaponics, uh, then check out the suggested videos up here in the in the corner. 
uh, you can check that playlist. You can also go back and check out the hydroponic rail system videos um, that we built uh, here recently and see the progress there if you're interested in that. Um, and don't forget to go ahead and click the little uh, icon here and subscribe to the channel. That'll, that'll help you be notified whenever, uh, whenever a new video pops up. Another thing, I've had a couple of requests. I don't know if you've noticed or not, so I'm just going to go over a little bit of information that's always in the description uh, box below. So in the description, you'll always give a little short narrative on what the video is about. Um, and then also in, uh, that'll, all, that'll change based on the video, but then there's always information that never changes. Um, my Facebook address is on there, or Facebook whatever. Um, I'm also on Instagram, so you can look me up on Instagram. It's not uh, Heritage Pride Homestead on Instagram, it's actually Hughes Brothers Build um, on Instagram. But I've got it in the description below there, so you can follow me on Instagram. And uh, so if you're not on YouTube a lot, uh, I've had some requests of people that have friended me on, uh, followers that friended me on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. And they requested that whenever I do a video, I uh, post it on the Facebook page so that people, you know, that are on Facebook more regularly uh, know that I've got a new video up. So I'm going to start posting on Facebook. So if you're not on YouTube all the time and you want to get the updates, then go to check out the description. Uh, go ahead and friend, send me a friend request on Facebook and then that way you'll be up to date on uh, all that stuff. You'll get notifications on that. So uh, also Google Plus as well. Um, Facebook automatic or not Facebook, uh, YouTube automatically uh, uh, comments on my Google Plus account saying that I've uploaded a video. So if you've got a Google Plus you can uh, friend me or whatever it's called on Google Plus and uh, that'll give you a notification as well when new videos pop up. Also in the description is the Heritage Pride Marketplace. I don't talk about it a whole lot, um, but whenever I'm doing these projects, the marketplace is, is, is up and running. Um, everything is not on there yet, but as I go, I, I add more things to the marketplace. So you can check out the marketplace. It's ran by Amazon. Um, so if you have an Amazon account or Amazon Prime, you can go on there, you can order from Amazon through my um, the Heritage Pride Marketplace, Homestead Marketplace. And it's just a little bit of a revenue kickback for me, but it's more convenient for you to not have to search. I can go on there and put it exactly what I'm using when I build these systems um, on there. And then that way, all you have to do is go to that if you're looking for something specific that I'm using in my system. Um, so anyway, that's the marketplace. You can check that out as well. Otherwise, that's about it. Um, so anyway, guys, I'll check, uh, catch you on the next video when we go over the auto siphons. Until next time, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe, and most importantly, have fun. See you guys later.